now. And you'll also remember the biblical story of the Tower of Babel, which was being constructed, but then the people were all speaking different languages, and that was the end of the Tower of Babel. Well, we have been trying to communicate in a communicative Tower of Babel for many years because the law enforcement, the fire, the emergency services all had different frequencies, different systems, different radios, very limited to different locations, and one here could not communicate with one there. Well, and when a hurricane's coming, when there's a major calamity, a major threat, and of course, as the events in New York yesterday have shown, a major threat can come anywhere, anytime. We would not be able to communicate effectively and instantly without fear of interruption, or as you've learned at going to the football game and you go on your phone and you can't get a signal out, those kind of things. That's not gonna happen anymore in our first responder community because on October the 24th, 4th, we opted in. We chose to participate in first, the FirstNet system, which will be handled here in South Carolina by AT&T, and that is making us a lot safer. And I say again, we, we, have the best, we have the best law enforcement in the whole country. There are a lot of people here that have been involved in our law enforcement, including these people standing behind us now been involved that we have great law enforcement, but allowing us to communicate instantly without interference, without interception, without limit is a great step forward. So this is a, this is a good day for South Carolina and one of many, many more good days that, that are going to be coming. So uh, with that, I would like to present some people to you to explain and we'll try to answer questions. And first will be Pam Lackey, who is the state president of AT&T South Carolina. Ms. Lackey. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor, for that. Uh, thank you, everyone, and good morning to all of y'all. I can't tell you what a privilege it is to be with you today and to be here for this announcement. In South Carolina, we're very fortunate, as you know, to have leaders who understand the importance of policies that position South Carolina as a place where business wants to invest capital and business wants to bring jobs and help strengthen our communities and make them safer. So thank you, Governor McMaster, uh, for your leadership and for making the FirstNet nationwide public safety broadband network a reality for South Carolinians and for our public safety community and her citizens. AT&T has a very long history of connecting people, and we believe no connection is more important than the one that helps save lives. AT&T has invested in South Carolina and communities and communications networks in our people, our urban and rural communities for 138 years. Between 2014 and 2016 alone, though, we invested more than $800 million in our superior wireless and wired networks in South Carolina alone. Our investments in the state have increased reliability, have increased coverage, speed, and overall performance, including improvement to services that provides support critical to first responders. Since AT&T was founded, we've worked with the public safety community to provide access to innovative communications and to enable them to better serve their communities. But as we look to the future, the opportunity to design, build, and operate an interoperable broadband network for South Carolina's first responders and first responders across the nation is a tremendous honor for AT&T. This is the beginning of a new era for public safety in South Carolina and throughout the United States, and we are very proud to be part of it and very honored to be part of it. FirstNet's about first responders. Working with the First Responder Network Authority will give public safety dedicated access to the network when they need it, which is 24 by 7, 365 days a year, just like their mission. They're putting their lives on the line 24-7, 365 days. So giving police, firefighters, and emergency responders access to advanced communications technology can make a real difference in a crisis situation. With support from FirstNet, first responders will be better equipped to serve the public. This network will help save lives. Governor McMaster, your decision is the very first step to making FirstNet a reality for South Carolina. And it's a sound financial decision for the state because as FirstNet will be built without the use of any state tax dollars. 
We look forward to continuing to work with South Carolina's public safety community as we build out this dedicated network for America's people and for our police and firefighters and emergency responders. So thank you very much for having us here and thank you very much for giving us this honor to do this. Mr. Poth is coming up next, I believe. Thank you very much. I'm Mike Poth, the Chief Executive Officer of the First Responder Network Authority, or FirstNet. We are honored and humbled to be here today to celebrate this important day for South Carolina. Governor, the governor's decision to opt in is a clear signal that public safety is critical to the success of this state and to the citizens and visitors that come every day, and I applaud your decision, sir. This is an important time to provide priority and preemption to the first responders that are protecting our neighborhoods, our communities, our families, and all the guests that come to this great state. By enabling to do this, we are starting tomorrow with AT&T to enable that to the public safety profession. And I have to admit, I think the public safety, and I want to thank all of them for coming, it's the world's noblest profession. They put their lives on the line every day in this small little contribution of technology. If it can help in any way, even in the slightest way, it's imperative that we employ this. Uh, AT&T and FirstNet will be working with the state for the next 25 years to ensure that the technology is in the hands of first responders to have a, make a difference and have an impact. So this is a great day. I want to personally thank uh, a, a lot of leadership in this state, in addition to the governor, uh, his staff with Chief Keel, Bob Stedman, who is a single point of contact, Marsha Adams, and George Crouch for the leadership to get public safety to come together to make this important decision. So thank you, sir. We're not going to let you down, and we're humbled to be part of the, this great solution. I'm Mark Keel, Chief of SLED, and uh, I appreciate, Governor, the opportunity to be here today on behalf of all the first responders in South Carolina. We started uh, looking at FirstNet uh, a couple of years ago, Marsha and her agency and myself, and we could not have been where we are today again without our fire chiefs, our police chiefs, our sheriffs, our manage, uh, managers of emergency management, that we all came together and talked about this system and what benefits it would have to South Carolina. I don't think anybody has to say or, or think about the disasters that we've had over the last couple of years in South Carolina and how important communication is to our first responders. With the floods and the hurricanes, what this system is gonna offer is gonna offer us a priority, it's gonna offer us preemption, it's gonna offer us a dedicated network for us to communicate so that we can save lives, which is what all our jobs are. So again, we appreciate this opportunity to be here today. We look forward to this system building out. I know that we have some very rural uh, areas still in South Carolina that are represented here today by some of our sheriffs and police chiefs. And I know that they're looking forward to having this system built out to where they'll have adequate uh, communication in those areas as well. So again, it is a good day for South Carolina and for South Carolina public safety. Thank you. And again, we, we have, we've always had extraordinary law enforcement and first responders and chiefs and sheriffs and fire chiefs. We, we've got a great team in South Carolina. And I, one thing I, I want to remind everyone is not only does this system, which allows all of them and us to communicate at any time, at any place, instantly, without interruption, but also what that means is not only are we safer, but they are safer. So families of the first responders in law enforcement, remember we will always be able to get in touch no matter where he or she is with that officer out there doing his or her job. So thank you very much. And uh, Marsha Adams, I need to say again, and uh, Chief Keel worked vigorously for a long time with many, many meetings, with contact with other states who've adopted the system or are considering adopting it, and some who have not adopted it, to make this decision an easy one for South Carolina. So now, is there any, anyone who has something they'd like to add? Never seen this group not have anything to say. <laughs> Ready to run on the field. <laughs> ready, ready to run on the field. Well, are any questions from anyone for anyone? We'd be glad to try to answer them for you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Chief Keel, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I know you said that uh, given the disasters and stuff we've gone through the last couple of years, that when it goes without saying that this can help save lives, what have been some of the 
been some of the issues that this will solve? Have you guys had any, or is it more just a preventative? Well, what, what will, the issues that it will solve is sometimes when, again, when there are disasters, uh, we can't communicate. Our cell phones don't work just like yours don't. You can't text, you can't communicate at all. And so uh, what we're hoping out of this system is, again, to have priority, to have a dedicated system, <laughs> system to public safety so that we don't have those communication gaps or those communication problems. Absolutely. Still be using our traditional forms, but again, with the additional bandwidth that this system will offer, it allow us to communicate and have priority to communicate. Would you mind talking a little bit more about uh, how it will help the rural counties and the folks who don't have the infrastructure or the cell phone Well, again, as, as AT&T builds this system out in South Carolina and provides coverage uh, th throughout the state, uh, those areas that now lack good coverage will have better coverage. Just a matter of time. Any more questions? Governor, there have been some uh, critics of this program in other states saying we need services in the first quarter of the month now. Uh, you know, and just the, 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 the penalties and the costs of not opting into it. Um, you know, what would set to you to assuage uh, any concerns that you had about the program? Um, and, you know, are you confident now that this will work that any issues that it had in the initial two uh, the, the, the costs are minimal. There will be, uh, you have to buy some phones, but the, the, the cost, there's no cost uh, to the state. But uh, as far, the main cost is the cost in, in public safety for not opting in. And that is a very great cost to go forward in today's world with the threats that we face without all of our law enforcement and first responders being able to communicate not only with each other, but with, with, with each other uh, in other states as well. This is getting to be not only a national, but a global situation as well. The cost of not having that ability is too, too great to calculate. How interesting are you with the federal grants? Yep. So, as the governor mentioned, this came out of the tragic events of 9-11, and it's actually the last uh, recommendation of the 9-11 Commission that a nationwide inoperable network be stood up. And in 2012, uh, Congress enacted a statute that created FirstNet, which is an independent authority within the government. When they did that, they also allocated $7 billion and 20 megahertz of uh, um, prime real estate spectrum for law enforcement, police, fire, EMS to be able to use that. So it's through a fu federal funds, but it's also a public-private partnership because AT&T is also investing $40 billion in this effort. So it's a $46 billion effort for public safety for the next 25 years for the 56 states and territories. Mr. Miller, is this something that will be active at all times? Is this more emergency like the flood or uh, disaster? It'll be at all times. Yep. And it'll be up to the, it'll be a policy question and, and the various agencies and various offices to decide when it would be appropriate to use it, but it is it is always there, and that's uh, that's one of the keys to it. It's always available at any time. Any more questions? Is yes, sir. This is a substitute for that. Th those they can continue to use those, but this will be a supplementary thing that they will all have. Every one of them will have it. Any more? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.